What's going on guys, it's Jeff for MadHattersReef.com and today we're going to be taking a look at how to drill an aquarium. Alright guys, so if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything saltwater aquarium related and try to help as many hobbyists as I possibly can be successful in the saltwater aquarium hobby. So if you love saltwater aquariums like I do, hit the subscribe button. Let's get after it. All right, guys, so first things first, what you're going to need when you're drilling a glass aquarium is plumber's putty. Now, this stuff's pretty cheap. You can pick it up at a local hardware store for about 3 to $5, and it's very similar to Play-Doh when you're working with it, um, and what we're trying to do here is we're going to be looking to get a seal around the area that we're going to be working on the glass aquarium. And I could have got away with using a lot less plumber's putty than I am using right here. Uh, this is the first time that I ever have drilled a aquarium, so I was kind of figuring things out as I went along. Uh, this is something that's been used in a lot of videos that you can watch on YouTube, and it's been used in almost every single video that there is out there or when I decided that it was time for me to drill these aquariums I wanted to give it a shot and see if it was something that was going to work so when you're working the plumber's putty on the aquarium uh, you're basically just trying to seal it make a little bit of a uh, cup so you have that water that's going to stay inside that working area and something that I did is I tried to have um, a low spot in the ring to have the water be able to run over the top and kind of control the direction in which that water would be pouring out of that ring. Something that you can't see here is I have the aquarium sitting inside a bucket so as I have the water running into the top of the aquarium it's going to be collected by the bucket. The reason I'm drilling these aquariums is I'm going to be installing bulkheads and having a standpipe basically pulling water off the top of the aquarium and draining into an aquarium below that. I'm going to have four 10 gallon aquariums plumbed into a 33 long and this is going to serve as a quarantine tank system. And what I'm doing right here is I basically took a peanut butter jar lid drilled the hole in the top so I could fit the drill bit inside the hole and clamped it to the aquarium so it's going to hold the drill bit in place. Now it wasn't 100% solid uh, but I was using what I had laying around and wanted to give myself a good start with the drill so I had a little bit of a groove to work with. And anytime that you're drilling glass or ceramic you want to make sure that you're using water uh, to keep the dust down as well as keep the glass or ceramic from breaking and that's why most people use the plumber's putty is to keep that water in that area uh, just not having it all over the place the peanut butter jar worked pretty good I've seen people use a lot of other things to kind of get that cut started and once I had a good start to the cut I removed the peanut butter jar lid and just had the water going in and was working inside the groove that I pre-drilled with the use of the peanut butter jar lid. Now the big thing with drilling glass aquariums is slow and steady wins the race. You want to take your time. You don't want to rush it because if you rush it you're going to end up breaking the aquarium. I'm working with 10 gallon aquariums. That's not a big deal if I break a 10 gallon aquarium. It's like 10 to 12 bucks. If you have your tank of a lifetime or say buy 220 that's going to put a hurting on you. Uh, not, not so much the wallet, but the uh, soul. Ah, 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 ah,
So it's real important when you're drilling the glass to not have any pressure whatsoever on the, the glass or the drill. And I kind of modified my grip to make sure that to avoid that and it definitely helped me. The first tank that I drilled I ended up breaking um, but I had three other 10 gallon aquariums kicking around. I'm going to end up having to go to the store to pick up that fourth one so I could have those four aquariums like I originally planned. And I think I might even be adding a fifth at some point, but for now we're just sticking with the four. So I ended up breaking the first one. Uh, it took me about five minutes actually to get through the glass and break it, and that was just way too fast. So I ended up slowing it down. I found that the average time per drill was about 20 minutes per 10 gallon aquarium, and the glass is really thin on the 10 gallon. I'm not sure if that's something that you have to use more caution working with thinner glass or um, if it's the same no matter what I don't know but eventually I'll probably um, end up drilling aquariums that are bigger and I'll find out then uh, once you start working your way through you're gonna notice if you didn't have your drill completely level which in my opinion is probably not very realistic um, you'll notice that one edge will break through first and you can actually see in the shot right here that the water is leaking from the point of where I started to break through and at that point I just kind of slow and steady wins the race kept working at it tried to balance out the drill as much as I could and you can hear the glass when you're drilling it that it almost sounds a little bit different as you start to break through and something else that you want to keep in mind if this is something that you end up doing for your own setups is take breaks give yourself a lot of breaks use that hose and try to um, clear it out make sure there's no glass debris in there because there will be a lot of glass debris in that little section and something that I made uh, the mistake of when I was drilling was I reused the plumber's putty between tanks and in my opinion if as cheap as it is I would use brand new putty every time just because there's a lot of glass debris that's going to end up in that putty and then working with it over and over again there's a good chance that you're going to end up with some of it in your hands and I think another thing that helped me is I did all of my drilling for all the aquariums in one shot and that really kept me um, kind of on the same page and it made it easier for me overall to get a feel for it and get better almost with every single tank that I drilled and when you get towards the end right there where that piece fell into the tank it I didn't put anything on the other side to catch that but it might be a good idea especially if you're working um, in a situation where the water might not be collecting at the bottom but I have a bucket so that kind of changes things for me um, it gave a little bit of um, break so that the full force of that glass wasn't hitting the other side and potentially cracking it so once the hole was completed I basically use the hose to clear up any debris, glass debris that was around and make sure that there's nothing that I'm going to get cut on once I move the aquarium and get it back to where it's going to be. A good last step here would be to get some sandpaper and just kind of file down that hole a little bit so you don't really have any sharp edges. One thing that you're going to want to keep in mind is drill bits. You're going to want to have a couple of them kicking around depending on how many holes that you're going to be drilling. I had three. I ended up using two on four tanks. So I was getting about two tanks per drill bit. I bought them on eBay. They're pretty cheap and expensive, so you want to grab a couple of them. So that's going to do it for drilling glass. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you want to support more videos like this, jump over to my Patreon page, and you can also support this video with a big thumbs up. I want to thank you guys for all that you do, and I'll see you guys next time right here with a brand new video.
Okay.